Hello, and welcome to an overview of the Rock Island Clean Line Transmission Line construction process. We appreciate your time and willingness to learn more about our project. Clean Line's mission is to connect abundant renewable energy resources with communities that have high demand for clean, reliable energy. The Rock Island team works hard to maintain excellent stakeholder relationships, to gather and respect landowner input, and to ensure our project is environmentally responsible. The purpose of this video is to explain the construction activities associated with the construction of both lattice and tubular monopole transmission towers. These activities include engaging and coordinating with landowners, surveying the transmission center line, work areas, and other features, clearing and grading for the right-of-way and structure sites as well as any access roads and equipment staging areas that are needed, excavating and installing tower foundations, assembling and erecting tower structures, stringing conductors, ground wires, and fiber optic cable, cleaning up and returning agricultural land and all construction areas to original use, continuing right-of-way maintenance and monitoring. Prior to construction, private landowners will be contacted to discuss specific construction activities that might impact their property. CleanLine is dedicated to working with landowners to minimize the impacts of construction on their land and everyday activities. Ground surveying must be performed to locate structure centers, determine the need for any access roads and temporary work areas, and right-of-way and easement boundaries. Once the surveyors have located the boundaries, they will place stakes or markers so the construction crews can begin clearing areas as needed. The right-of-way and easement areas include the actual land acquired for the location of the transmission towers, the area below the transmission lines, and access roads. The easement areas beneath the transmission lines can continue to be used for farming, grazing cattle, and other activities that do not interfere with operation of the line. The right-of-way area is estimated to be between 145 and 200 feet wide. The width is dependent on how close the structures are placed to each other, terrain, clearance issues, and other considerations. Clearing of natural vegetation will be required for construction, clearances for electrical safety, long-term maintenance, and reliability of the transmission line. Trees within or adjacent to the right-of-way that could fall onto the transmission line during wind-induced conductor swing or that otherwise present an immediate hazard to the transmission line must be removed. In order to construct and operate the transmission line, both temporary and permanent access roads may be required. However, we expect permanent access roads through agricultural lands to be a rare occurrence. Before any road construction begins, the appropriate agency and landowners will be consulted. Whenever possible, existing access roads will be used to minimize impacts. Construction staging and laydown areas will be developed near the construction zones. These areas will be used to temporarily lay out equipment and materials to be used for the specific construction activities at nearby locations. They may also serve as field offices, reporting locations for workers, and locations for equipment maintenance. After the construction and staging areas have been set up, crews can begin work on the structural foundations. The design of the foundation is dependent upon the type of structure chosen. The foundation for a lattice structure must support four tower legs and has a wider footprint. The tubular monopole has a narrower footprint but requires a much deeper hole for the foundation to support the structure. The tower structures will be secured to the foundations with reinforced steel and encased in concrete. This work requires the use of heavy equipment such as augers, excavators, cranes, and material and concrete hauling trucks. The lattice and tubular monopole structures, associated hardware, insulators, and stringing sheaves will be transported to each structure site by truck. The structures will be assembled on the ground and then lifted onto the foundations and secured. The structure heights will typically range between 120 and 160 feet tall depending on topography, structure type, span length, and other factors. 
CleanLine will work with landowners to minimize and mitigate the impact of vehicles on the existing soil conditions. After the towers are in place, crews will use specialized pulling equipment to install the conductors, ground wires, and any fiber optic cable. This process begins by first stringing pilot lines through the stringing sheaves on the structures. The pilot lines will be used to pull a stronger, larger diameter line attached to conductors and ground wires. This process is repeated until the ground wires and conductors are pulled through all of the sheaves. Once the lines are in place, the pulling and tensioning equipment will maintain tension on the lines while they are fastened to the structures. Construction, operation, and maintenance activities are subject to various regulations designed to protect environmental resources and the public from risks such as fire, hazardous materials, soil erosion, dust, and other possible effects of air quality. Construction and staging areas will be kept in an orderly condition during construction. Refuse and trash will be removed daily and disposed of in an approved landfill or in another appropriate manner. Contaminants such as oil, hydraulic fluids, and fuels will not be dumped on the ground and all spills will be cleaned up. CleanLine is committed to working cooperatively with landowners throughout the life of the transmission line to mitigate agricultural impacts and restore land use to as near to its original condition as practicable when construction is complete. Temporary access roads will be restored and existing roads will be left in a condition equal to or better than their condition prior to construction. Following construction, the right-of-way area will continue to be maintained and monitored on a regular basis. Visual inspection of the line typically involves a helicopter, however maintenance work is usually performed by ground crews. If repairs are needed, landowners will be notified prior to conducting any work on their property. Clean Line is dedicated to minimizing impacts on current agricultural land uses such as livestock operations and farming. Whenever feasible, we anticipate routing the line along existing divisions of land such as section lines, county roads, railroads, and fence lines to minimize impacts on local communities. However, there will be many situations where agricultural land must be crossed to maximize distances from homes or to follow other routing criteria. The current design of the towers provides sufficient clearance under the transmission line to operate standard farm equipment and grow full height crops, not including tree crops. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the transmission line construction process for the Rock Island Clean Line. We believe our success is dependent on thorough public involvement and dedicated environmental stewardship. Clean Line is committed to a responsible and transparent outreach process that engages the communities and landowners that will be affected. For more information regarding the construction process, please contact us at 877-907. 8516 or info at rockislandcleanline.com. Information can also be found on our website at rockislandcleanline.com.